Star Wars 7x7 episode 2514. All right, here we go with the Bad Batch briefing. It is cornered. This is episode four. Puts us a quarter of the way through the first season of the Bad Batch. And yeah, let's go, shall we? Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So Cornered finds our Bad Batch heroes on the run and things are getting even more perilous for them. Not only are they out of rations and out of fuel and almost out of money, but their ship has also been identified and so they're going to have to find a place to lay low, to stock up, and to change the signature key on their ship so they can continue to move about the galaxy but be undetected while they do so. Now this is a full spoiler briefing just in case you need the warning and as far as going undetected well yeah I guess there's only so undetected that they can be and you know it really isn't about the Bad Batch themselves but fascinatingly it's about Omega. There is apparently a bounty on Omega's head and the Celestin who is running the docking bay on Pantora where they land to try to get their supplies and change the signature key. Well, he apparently recognizes Omega from, I guess, you know, whatever <laughs> black market alerts happen around in the bounty hunter underworld or whatever. And he sends a broadcast to somebody who turns out to be none other than Fennec Shand. And yes, we get our first taste of Fennec in the series. And in fact, actually, it's a taste that we've already had a lot of to some degree in the sense that in trailers and teasers and promotional materials, it turns out that much of the action on Pantora is shown in the trailer. Or actually, I guess what I should say is what snippets we see of action with Fennec Shand are pretty much taken from this episode. That's something we'll have to keep an eye on for a while. In the meantime, let's talk about the rest of the episode. So they're initially going to go to Ida Floor. That's a planet that appears for the first time, named for the first time ever in any Star Wars story as far as we know. And instead, because they don't have enough fuel to make it there, the closest stop that they can make is Pantora. Pantora has shown up in the Clone Wars previously, so it's not an entirely new situation. So this, of course, adds another level of mystery to the Bad Batch and gives us more intrigue going forward. Who exactly put the bounty on Omega's head and who brought Fennec in to help collect it? And if you've seen Revenge of the Sith, then you've certainly seen a Pantoran and a rather famous one in his way, Baron Papanoida, who was played by none other than George Lucas himself in Revenge of the Sith. He was a Pantoran, so there you go. And speaking of the prequels, I have to say the chase scene with Fennec and the Hunter really did kind of give Attack of the Clones vibes, right? That very kinetic action scene in the beginning of the movie where Obi-Wan and Anakin are chasing Zam Wessel, right? Similar kind of thing. And the actual, you know, helmet and outfit that Fennec Shand wears is almost reminiscent of Zam Wessel's in its way. And the droids that come to help the Bad Batch toward the end of the episode kind of give off little D-Squad vibes from the Clone Wars or the, you know, droids that helped Ahsoka and Rex escape in the final story arc of the Clone Wars in Season 7. But thankfully, it seems like they aren't meeting the kind of terrible end that those droids met in that episode. As for the character interactions, well, I'm grateful that they split up Echo and Tech because, you know, we're starting to see enough of the, that that whole dynamic and how it works out. This time we've got Tech and Wrecker paired together and that's a, a fun time. And also Hunter and Echo and Echo being passed off as a droid. So definitely moments of humor interspersed with what is really a very heavy action episode. And at the same time, it goes to show how desperate the Bad Batch is getting in terms of being able to take care of their even most basic needs, right? The fact that they were going to swindle this poor guy in the marketplace by selling Echo as a droid for 3,000 credits only to have Echo then break out and steal all his droids. And yes, of course, they let the droids go back, but still they, you know, swindle the guy out of 3,000 credits. And this was an honest merchant too. It's not like 
we're talking about a scoundrel here or anything like that. You know, the <laughs> passed on the black market style merchandise, right? That Hunter was offering. Hunter was saying like, yeah, this will get you 1800. And the merchant was like, well, yeah, on the black market maybe, but I don't do that. So yeah, you know, a poor honest merchant getting swindled in all of this. Oh, and I forgot about the resistance vibes thrown off by this show as well, or this particular episode. So the Vorpox, which are those little barky things that Omega goes chasing after, right? So Toradoza in Star Wars Resistance owned one of those. And additionally, two of the people who provide voices for this episode are folks who got their start on Star Wars Resistance. Bobby Moynihan is the voice of the Grand Trader that gets swindled. And Taryn Killam is the voice of Raspar. Six, who is running that particular docking bay. Tarim Kelm was a stormtrooper voice in Star Wars Resistance. And speaking of stormtroopers, we don't necessarily have any in this episode, but we have clone troopers marching, and there's a moment where Hunter and Omega can stop and reflect about the fact that the Pantorans are cheering, and it seems rather puzzling, but Hunter explains it's because they're you know, happy the war is over. And, you know, there's a little bit of a touching on, you know, whether this is a good thing or not a good thing. And, you know, it's kind of interesting to see that approached. And in thinking about, you know, age levels for whom this is targeted, right? This is definitely older than I would say Star Wars Resistance was. It's more in the Clone Wars range because the Pantoran security forces are actually getting shot down and, you know, taken out in a very you know, older demographic uh, <laughs> child's age, right, situation. And it actually struck me as well that it was rather surprised it was Pantoran security forces that were drawn into the chase that was happening between Hunter and Fennec trying to get a hold of Omega, especially when there was, you know, that display of clone troopers marching around. So we know clone troopers were present in the area, but none of them were dispatched to find out what was going on with this, you know, crazy altercation that had speeders flying around and explosions and whatnot. So, you know, that was a bit of a surprise not to see the clone troopers also engaged in this whole thing. But ultimately, they packed a heck of a lot into an episode where the logline for the episode was, The Bad Batch's supply run goes awry, and boy, does it go awry. And now we know that there's a lot more danger to be had in the galaxy because it's not just them trying to stay away from the Empire, but it's also that they're coming for Omega as well. And there you go. That is the briefing on Season 1, Episode 4 of The Bad Batch. It's cornered. They apparently made it out of the corner for the time being. We'll have to see what happens next. And that's going to do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.